welcome everybody to the first episode of what is apparently going to be called the Yelverton Show, courtesy of some friends that I have. Today we're going to be with my guest host, hosts, Heather Allen, Jay Riley, and this guy, if you haven't seen them, is of Bobcat Sports Talk fame. And we're going to be discussing what is the juggernaut release of this season, Grand Theft Auto V. Billion dollars in three days. Nothing can top it. That's my prediction, anyway. And what we're going to start off with is what everyone plays Grand Theft Auto V for, or any Grand Theft Auto for that matter, the gameplay. Heather, Jay, opinions? Um, with the gameplay, I mean, they added several new um, features in there. Um, they changed the, um, the way that you select your weapons. Um, it's now a weapon wheel, and uh, I like that. You don't have to... Um, search through the weapons I mean, that's now. something they had off, like, Red Dead Redemption, and I was a yeah. big fan of that, definitely. Yeah, it, it makes it quicker to select your weapon. And um, they also did that with the radio, but they kept the um, ability to cycle through the radio. But now you can choose on the on the wheel. And the driving. I, I like Also, the now that you're one. speaking of the uh, radios, stations, and all that, one thing I want to mention is I was not a defender of Grand Theft Auto 4's soundtrack. I hated it for the most part. Big improvement here. Yeah, Big I think improvement. so. Big improvement. I mean, I've always been a fan of, I guess you say, older songs, and that's what they've included. Uh, yeah, I mean, I um, I was playing it early, and I heard Def Leppard. Uh, I thought that Can't was really cool. Can't go wrong, yeah. Def Leppard. And Elton John, I've seen Elton John. But they also have new music, too. So they uh, have Rihanna yeah, and yeah. Britney Spears. Definitely. <laughs> which happens to play in the obligatory strip club of every Grand Theft Auto <laughs> release ever. <laughs> I'm sorry that had to be mentioned, mm. but... It's it's in there. It is in there. Trevor, Heather, I'm sorry, spirit of Grand Theft Auto here, there's actually someone named Trevor. And, and you mentioned driving as well. And once again, I go back to four. In terms of, like, car damage... Car damage, I thought, was so much better in 4. Like, 5, I yeah. slam into the side of a bridge. Full speed, front of car, barely damaged. Do that in 4, your entire hood is going... Poof. Well, not only that, but, I mean, your character would probably be out of the car at and that I point, think... so he'd probably fly through the window. Oh, definitely. Field, I mean. um, yeah, I mean, I agree with you on that. Um, the damage is... Uh, I mean, there are certain aspects that, you know, one is better than the other, and for the damage, you could tell on the yeah. car, you could see it clearly. But um, the in 5, if you drive past something you scrape your car, the paint is chipped where you scratch it. So um, I, do like I think that. that's a cool little detail. I do like that. Yeah. Also, speaking of driving, at first I wasn't that big of a fan of it in 5, but it has definitely grown on me as I played GTA 5 over time. And speaking of driving around the world. Oh, man. I just, I mean, what can you say about that? It's There's so much that you can do. Um, there's the little missions that you can do on the side. Um, there's the convenience stores that you can rob. That's always fun. Um, and I like how it, it um, doesn't just, like, you don't have to go to a loading screen when you're switching areas. Um, it kind of transitions. Like, for example, you know, going through Vinewood, and then as you drive towards the desert, desert, it gradually changes. Like, I, I think that's a really cool feature. Also, audience, there is a fully functioning golf course you can participate in in this game. Just don't go at night. Apparently the guards there are trigger happy. So, so also, another thing I like they brought back from previous entries, such as San Andreas, was the ability to fly planes. And as we said, I mean, this world is absolutely massive in scale. I mean, you would have to have planes to get anywhere yeah. a reasonable amount of time. And also the shooting. I don't think you mentioned this. You might have. But if you've ever played Max Payne 3, it's a lot like that. And vastly improved over 4, as I said. So, I mean, anything else you'd like to add to it? Um, I mean, I, yeah, I agree. I like the shooting. Um, I think, you know, it's easy to target on to somebody. Um, the only thing that I don't like about the shooting is how small um, the dot is. Yeah. It's just, it's really hard to see unless, um, it seems like the game's meant for it to be played on a bigger screen. And unless you have a big screen, um, it's really hard to see the dot. 
But that's the only complaint I have about the shooting. But um, also, Jay, I know you're the hopeful yet who's kind of patiently waiting. Impressions? Um, well, personally, guys, I have to give it a round of applause. I love Grand Theft Auto. I rarely play it. I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I'm a brainiac and like I'm really good at the game. I'm not. I like to run around, kill people, run girls over, run over <laughs> prostitutes. All the good stuff it's that comes with Grand Theft Auto. Um, I haven't played it yet. I've played all of the other Grand Theft Autos. Um, you know, just going over to friends' houses and playing it. I want people to realize something. The reason they make Grand Theft Auto and the reason that it sold billions of dollars is because everyone has this human depravity inside of them that makes them want to be bad. How many of you have ever heard a song that says, I want to be good? There's so many songs called Bad or I Want to Be Bad or Let's Be Bad. There's always something and it's just like, okay. Like the only song I've ever even heard of that said, let's be good. It's like, I feel good. And that's by, that's not, that's not even like a real song as far as like, let's be good. It's like saying, I feel good. And he's even talking about sex if I'm not badly mistaken. I think that the reason Grand Theft Auto is so awesome is because you get to be a person that you wouldn't usually be. Problem is, some people take that way too far, and that's why we have serial killers on the loose, and we have people that are crazy. So most of you at home that are going to watch this, please don't turn into those type of people, because that's not what this game is meant to do. It's meant for you to have an alternate reality, so you can kind of live your life the way that you could if you wanted to be bad. Or, you know, you could be like a good Grand Theft Auto gamer. I don't know how that would work out for you. You'd probably be broke sitting on the street and eating, you know, raw hamburger meat. But, you know, good luck with that. Um, I think that the game is going to be awesome, and I'm waiting for Christmas because, you know, I'm a broke college student, and I have a job, but I prefer to spend my money on other things at this time, and I'm going to wait till Christmas. I'm going to get the game. I'm really excited about it. It's going to be a really good game. I know that. I've heard way too many reviews about it say that it was like a 10 out of 10 or a 5 out of 5. Like, they said that it is one of the greatest games that they've ever released. There's still some issues with it because you're not going to find perfection in any game. No, but no, of course it's not. Gonna be it's going to be a game that people want to play. And I feel like I want to play it because you get to do anything you want. Like I was told that you can sit in your house and sit there the whole entire time. Watch TV. Watching TV. You can go to the golf course, as they previously said. You can do anything you want. I think that the game has got a lot of uh, content to it from what I've been told. And I'm just hopeful to get it. But uh, to add on to what Jay said, speaking of serial killers, if this game turns you into a serial killer, chances are you had problems before you played this. I mean, I think yeah. they need to put a Do Not Try This at Home label. <laughs> and that, uh, that brings me to another point is, um, I guess to bring into the story, since you were talking about problems, and you're right, no game has perfection. It's, it's not possible. Um, going into the story... This is where I begin to find my faults with it, is in terms of story, I'm not going to lie. I think this is one of the weaker entries. I don't know about you. I mean, basically, this is pretty much the plot. It's a great heist movie. According, according to y'all, the gameplay is what makes this game oh, so great. Oh, definitely, definitely. And I think that that's what people want. Like, I mean, some people are like, you know, they want a role-playing game, and they want to be like, oh, I want to know the story. But to me, when I'm playing a game, it's all about what I can do in the game. It's yeah. not about who I am or where I'm going. It's about what can I do? Like, how bad can I be? Or how good, good can, can I, I be? Yeah. It's all about, honestly, when it comes down to games like this, it's all about morality. It's all about finding out who you really are inside. Because everybody well, speaking of which, now, would like to find out who they are inside. Now that you mention that, there's one scene, you two, when you're working with the FIB, that the GTA's version of the FBI. I don't, Trevor, not Trevor, once again, Heather, I am so sorry. <laughs> He's got the Grand Theft Auto vibes going hard. Oh, definitely. And speaking of Trevor... There's a scene, as I said, involving the FIB. I don't know if you've reached it yet, where you actually have to torture. Yeah, I've been the game. So, yeah, uh, so you, I, I got you know, to that. Oh, it where was a little... you uh, you were talking about like morality. This is one of the only times in a video game I may have actually felt uncomfortable wow. doing something, because this isn't just some passive scene. You actively torture someone to get information out of them. Like, for instance, you pick your technique. You waterboard them. Shock them. Shock them like pfft, break his kneecap. Break his kneecap. Or pull his tooth pull out. Pull his tooth out. And one Tell thing me. I'd like to mention about Grand Theft Auto 5, and this is true of every Grand Theft Auto game, um 
It's always been a bit of a social commentary, a satire of America. It's always done that really well. And involving social commentary, that's something that's out there right now is should we torture people? And I'm think I'm thinking this is that's why Rockstar did this, obviously. They took a political agenda oh, and threw definitely. it into a video game. Definitely. Because how how better to present an agenda than to present it to hundreds of and thousands of people, people yeah. that are gonna actively play this game because it's this awesome game. See, I'm a normal sports gamer, but there's something about, you know, Grand Theft Auto that catches my attention and that's because there's just this reality that you're not used to. And you can do anything you want. And we've we've mentioned that and I just think that the ability to sit there and like like if I wanna sit there on the side of the streets and do nothing, I can do that. There's just something about being able to have another place away from actual reality. Like, a lot of people, they drown themselves in music. A lot of people drown themselves in movies. A lot of people drown themselves in all kinds of other areas. And some people play instruments for that. Yeah. Others, gamers, they drown themselves in this act, this fake reality because it is, it's something that they, they're amused by. Everybody has this amusement with something. For me, it's music and sports. For others, it may be games. I find Grand Theft Auto to be that amusement. I find that to be like a game that people are like, you know, I don't want to be like this guy, but I want to know what it's like to be this guy. So it's just like you take this totally different aspect that you wouldn't be looking for in a game, you throw it in there. And honestly, the name of the the name of the gaming company is Rockstar Games. Like they even have a cool name. And they kind of took like a rock star aspect because you 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 know you have to earn your money and everything you have to get all this stuff but you yeah. can live a rock star life by the end of the by the end of the game or even before the end of the game it all depends on you know I, I'm sure there's going to be cheat codes out for it and oh there are there are use, yeah some people go and use cheat codes and everything me personally I just like to run around and just you know kill people uh, definitely all that good stuff and speaking but. of a uh living a rock star life i mean obviously by the end of this you're going to be a millionaire right if not more and the way you make this stuff is obviously as i said story is essentially a great heist movie which doesn't compare to like the immigrant tale of grand theft auto 4 or the past that haunts you story of Rockstar's previous work red dead redemption but arguably the heists are the greatest missions in this game you know, I like how um, you can go and you can actually plan out the heist. Um, that's, you know, um, in previous games you had options here and there, but I mean this is entirely, pretty much nothing but options, and um, I think that was a really cool thing to add in there. It's, um, it gives the game kind of more of an interactive feeling. Oh, definitely, definitely. But um, as we were kind of discussing story and kind of what you, go along with what you said, Jay, living out another alternate reality. Let's get into the characters of this game. Here we go. I, um, I like how the story um, connects all the characters. As do I. And I like that there's three different characters before. I don't think that you could play as this many characters no. and, and, in any other game. And, and um, I'm not saying in previous works I got bored playing with one character, but this game has shown me kind of what we've been missing out on. Yeah. And I really hope this is something they continue to do, giving us more than one playable perspective over their um, subsequent entries in GTA or whatever they plan on doing next. Yeah, and what's really interesting is that each character has their own background story. Like, it, it's not generic at all. Like, they each have something different, and they each have certain um, abilities when it comes to the game. Like, um, for instance, Michael DeSanta. His is essentially bullet time from Max Payne. Slow it down, <laughs> done. Franklin... It's essentially the same thing, but he can do it in cars, considering he is a repo man. And, well, then we have Trevor. Poor Trevor. <laughs> <laughs> and his Berserko rage mode, essentially. And speaking of these special abilities, past that, Jay, just based off your impressions from maybe what you've seen, Heather, based off what you've played, favorite characters? Hmm. Or favorite character, I might. Michael DeSanta sounds like a sounds like a pretty pretty good character from from what I've heard and you know from the the commercials and all that good stuff because obviously I haven't played this game. Yeah. 
But from what I've heard and what I've seen, he seems like the character that I would most want to play with. I'm going to have to agree with you on there based off my experience. Um, I'm letting everyone know now that hasn't played it, and audience, you might even agree with me, living Michael DeSanta's life is like a reality TV show, essentially. I mean, his family antics are just, oh my god. I mean, his wife, please no one be like his (laughs) wife. Or his kids. Or his kids. Jimmy, which, by the way, I want to point out is played by... What's his name again? He was one of the ones on um, 21 Jump Street. Jonah Hill. Jonah Hill. Jonah Hill. His son, Jimmy DeSanta, is Jonah Hill. That should tell you enough already. That's a great family. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, it's hard to choose a favorite. Um, they all have their unique you oh, know, characteristics. You know, Franklin, he's, he's interesting. Trevor, I like Trevor because he's really funny. And, Trevor is. Yeah, he's... Something else. I really wish Um. I could curse on this show, but I can't, (laughs) because there's a word for what I would call him. But, you know, I have to agree with y'all. I think Michael is the most, uh, he's my favorite character personally, because um, you see, like, a change throughout the game of him that you don't really see with the other two. The other two are kind of um, stagnant. They don't really change. But Michael, um, he's trying to be a better person, and, uh, and, you know, he wants to get away from the criminal life. Well, I would say, if anything, um, that's more to um, Franklin's yep. goal because, you know, he grew up in the in hood, hood. <laughs> essentially, and he's trying to get away from all that. He hates it. And he does, like, essentially get away from it, but he, he still has his friends there. And... Yeah, at the same time, I guess I could get a call back to the tale of Nico Bellic in 4. Um, they try to get away from it, but I guess you could say their background it just drags them in can't be helped. Like Alright guys, um, characters, as I'm going to include mine, obviously Michael DeSanta so far has been my favorite, although I'm going to put Trevor Phillips as a close second. He is an absolute blast to play. So should we have like final thoughts? So I guess with that, we're going to go to final thoughts on the game. I guess you could say we give it our rating, basically. Are we doing the yellow music? No, we're not really going oh, to do okay. the Yelby's we discussed okay. previously. All right, all right, so, all right. I'll, I guess I'll like I'll... one out of ten. Okay, so, all right. Um, I'm going to give the game a nine out of ten. I really liked it. I don't think that it's um, it, it's reached its full potential, but it is extremely close. I haven't played it yet. Um, it's got ten out of ten on quite a few, quite a few reviews, and it's got five out of five on quite a few reviews also. So... Audience, let me know your feedback. I'd really like to know how how it plays out for y'all, but um, I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10 because I've heard some really awesome things about it, and, uh, you know, I'm a sports gamer, so, like, I don't really know how to rate this game, but for the most part, I can give it a 10 out of 10 based on what I know that there is involved. Yeah. I think I'm going to have to agree with Heather – Nine out of ten. It, I wouldn't even give it decimals, honestly. Like I said, part I love this game. It, it, oh man, but part of loving something is accepting its faults. And then as I, as I said, probably its biggest fault, and it's not even that big to tell you the truth, is the story of it. Like I said, it's not that memorable. It's basically a good heist movie. But beyond that, gameplay fantastic. Love the characters. I would even say this might even be the great, best Grand Theft Auto yet, to tell you the truth. I agree. So, everybody, once again, Ian Yelverton, Heather Allen, Jay Riley, signing off, and we'll see you next time on the next episode of The Yelverton Show. Mm-hmm.